So here we are, me and my mate, in Slough Creek. It's April, we've established a territory. The snow is mostly melted. There's still some snow on those slopes over there, which are facing north, so cooler and uh, less melting going on. And there's patches of snow all around that just hasn't melted yet. But enough snow has melted that we can go around and find potential den sites. I think this is gonna be a good one and uh, choose one. But first, let's look at our wolves here. So, yeah, my mate, so obviously you can tell that she has a brown coat, a little bit of mange going on there, but you know, I don't hold that against her. And I have a dark coat, in fact, I have a black coat. So that means, in terms of genetics, that she is small k, small k, and I am big k, small k. And if you don't know what that means, let's do a little refresher because it's been over two years now since our video all about wolf genetics and coat color. So we'll switch to that for a minute and then come back here to Slough Creek. Here. The cool thing is that while most of the wolf's genome hasn't been analyzed or sequenced yet, in 2009 some scientists did study it and discovered a gene variant that controls coat color, specifically whether wolves have a black coat or a gray coat. And what made it really uh, interesting and got a lot of press at the time was that they discovered that the this gene variant for black coats comes from dogs, that wolves um, apparently interbred with dogs and got this uh, gene variant for black coats. So these scientists call this gene variant the K locus. Every wolf has two copies of this gene, which using standard genetics terminology is indicated with a K. A small K means a gray coat and a big K means a black coat. And the way the, these gene variants combine is if the wolf has two small Ks, the KK, then it has a gray coat. And that could really be anything from white to dark gray or brown. Those are all gray coats um, as far as this gene knows. If the wolf has one big K and one small K, then it has a black coat. That's because the big K is the dominant uh, variant. This combination also seems to give wolves extra resistance to disease. So that's a good thing to have. But if a wolf has two big Ks, it's KK, then it's black, but it's probably also dead because this combination is usually fatal before birth. So using this knowledge, we can accurately determine whether a pup will have a black coat or a gray coat. And uh, we use something called the Punnett square, that's a standard genetics tool, to determine that. So let's look at some Punnett squares. So here we have both parents are small K, small K, they have gray coats. Um, then all the pups will have gray coats. But if one parent has a gray coat, so small k, small k, and the other one has a black coat, so that's either big k, small k, or maybe big k, big k, but let's say big k, small k, because those are the ones that survive, then each pup has a 50% chance of being black coat, big k, little k, and a 50% chance of a gray coat, little k, little k. Now, if both parents have a black coat, and let's say they're big K, little K. Then each pup has a 25% chance of being big K, big K, black and probably dying in utero. It has a 50% chance of being big K, little K, which is black, and a 25% chance of being small K, small K, which is gray. So when your wolf meets a potential mate, you'll be able to learn a little bit about its genetics and you can decide if you think it's a good match. I do need to make one revision to this old video. If both parents have black coats and are a big K, little K, there's that 25% chance of mortality with the pup. It's not necessarily that it will die in utero, which means before birth. It's just that there aren't really hardly any big K, big K adult wolves running around in Yellowstone. Biologists don't know when they die, so probably some die before birth and some are born, but just aren't as healthy as uh, the other pups and don't make it to adulthood. Something befalls them along the way, and that will be in the game as well. So we've built that into our in-game genetic system. But that's not the only thing we've got in our genetic system. Tommy, our lead developer, has built an in-game genetic system that has 50 genes. That's 25 pairs of alleles. Real wolves have about 20,000 functional genes, so ours is obviously much simpler, but it still, I think, adds a lot, especially as we are looking at pups now. So out of those 50 genes in our game, two are for the K locus, determining black or gray. And then we have another 18, nine pairs of alleles that are about selecting the specific coat color and uh, tinting of the coat. And then we have another 12 genes for attributes, which we were calling stats until recently. And then another 18 for personality. 
So all those things are included in our genetic system. And that means they're all inheritable by the pups. And so here we are a month later with our pups. Now, this time we only got four pups. It varies. Maybe we're not a great diversity match, I'm not sure. And so these four pups, we can uh, take a closer look at them here. here. Oh, one's way out here. And that one's carrying a stick, except it's not actually carrying a stick. It's got a stick through its snout. So that looks painful, although I guess some people do that. We'll have to tweak that. Anyway, we have four pups. That one's got a black coat. That one has a brown coat. Brown and gray are the same thing as far as the K locus in genetics goes. No, this one's got a black coat. And something is terribly wrong with this one. Oh dear. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. Oh dear. You know, they don't always turn out how you want. Okay, so we have four pups. One is having great trouble with the ground. Um, but I can tell that it's brown. It's got a brown coat. So we have basically four pups, two have black coats and two have brown coats, which is exactly like the perfect outcome from the Punnett Square. Sometimes I run this and I'll have five pups and they'll all have black coats. It really depends on just how the probabilities work out each time. We run the numbers, run them through the Punnett Square and uh, create the genetics for that letter of pups. So you can tell the coat color pretty quickly at a glance. Sometimes it's like, well, eh, is that brown, is that black? Might be a little bit of a judgment call. Um, it is one or the other, according to the genes, but um, visually, you know, obviously there's a, a range in the middle there that it could be a little hard to know for sure, but generally you can. But the other inheritable traits are not as easy to tell at a glance. The only way to understand the personality of your mate or a pup is just by observation. There's no personality readout that you can read. It's just like real people. You just got to observe and interact and uh, see what you think. And over time, you can also get an idea if they are healthier or less healthy, if they're faster or not quite as fast. All those attributes are also going to be evident because they are going to happen just like your wolf does, just like your mate does. So the genetic system is all working well now. Some of the things with pups uh, maybe needs a little more work. We have the whole Slough Creek arc basically working, and now it's all the little tweaks and bugs and refinements that we need to do before it's ready to release. But we are making good progress.